we are going to simplify this radical. A radical is a square root. And what we do when we simplify square roots is we're looking for square numbers that go into 500. Your square numbers are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and so forth. You need to know your square numbers to do these. What you should notice is if you know your square roots, you should notice that 100 times 5. Hopefully that's pretty obvious. 100 is... The square root of 100 is 10. The square root of 5 is the square root of 5. Do you understand? 100 times 5 is 500. Now, what is the square root of 100 equal? Can I cross that out and just make it a 10? Isn't the square root of 100 10? So, by the way, there should be a multiply there. That was the square root of 100 times the square root of 5. Now, instead of putting the square root of 100, I'm just going to put 10. So my answer is now 10 square root 5, or 10 times square root 5. I'm done. That square root is simplified. You're pulling out or separating out square numbers out of your square root. Look at number 2. You're trying to think of square numbers that go into 32. There are a couple of different square numbers that go in, but the first obvious one is 4. 4 times what? Okay, 4 times 8 gives you 32. Now, what is 4 equal? What's the square root of 4? Two. 2. So that becomes a 2. But there's still a problem. 8 can still break down. Over here, could 5 break down anymore? Did any square numbers go into 5? No. no. What square number goes into 8? Doesn't 4 also go into that again? 4 times 2? And what is the square root of 4 again? 2. Isn't that 2? So, don't we now have 2 times 2 times square root 2? We have a 2, a 2, and a square root 2? What's 2 times 2? Isn't that 4? Square root 2? That is a simplified four form of square root 32. By the way, did anybody notice 32 was square root 16 times 2? 32 is 16 times 2. And what's the square root of 16? 4. Four 2. You could have spotted the 16 right off the bat and jumped straight to this. But I had it, for some people, they have to do it multiple steps. This is simplifying square roots. You have to deal with this within some of these problems down here. Okay, now we're going to solve this. And the way you solve this quadratic is you factor. If I factor the left side, it's equal to 0. If I factor it, I get negative 36 on top, negative 9 on top. Sorry, negative 9 on bottom. What are my two values to give you negative 9? Negative 12. Negative 12 and 3? I know some of you struggle with that. You'll get better with practice. That will be x minus 12, x plus 3 and it still equals 0. So I factor the left, I now have this. I rewrote it. Why did I do that? Here's the reason. There's something called the zero product property. Do you understand? I have two things multiply to get 0. Do you understand either this? Doesn't x minus 12 have to equal 0? Or x plus 3 has to equal 0? One of those has to equal 0, right? In order for two numbers to multiply to get zero, doesn't one have to be zero? When you multiply two numbers to equal zero, doesn't one have to be zero? The only way you get zero is if one of the numbers is zero. So either this equals zero or this equals zero. Both of those are my answer. I set each piece equal to zero. So what I do is I add 12 over. So x equals 12. Here I minus 3 over. So x equals negative 3. So what did I just do? I factored. I set my two factors equal to 0. And I got my two answers. Meaning 12 and negative 3 both make this true. It has two answers. 
Anytime you have an x squared, you can have two answers, two or less. You can have one, you can have zero as well. Now, the difference between three and four is in order to do this factoring technique, you have to make your equation equal to zero. So what you're going to do here is you're going to minus the seven x over, and you're also, actually let's do that first. That would give us negative 18x. Is it equal to zero yet? No, we also have to add this 32 over. Now, can the 32 add to either of these? No. no. So you just add it somewhere over here. You end up with uh, x squared minus 18x plus 32 equals zero. We are now going to factor this. So that's 32 and negative 18. 32 and negative 18. The two values are negative 6 negative 2. Negative 16. Negative 2. By the way, if that's a positive on top, you know these two are both going to be negative or positive. Anywho, that's x minus 16, x minus 2. So do you understand you have x minus 16 equals 0, and you have x minus 2 equals 0? Both of those, one of those has to equal 0. Now, can most of you just tell me the answer by looking at that? Yes. Most of you should be able to look at that and go, oh, that's 16, and look at this one and go, oh, that's 2. That should work. 16, 2. Both those will make this true. So here it was equal to 0. Here we had to set it equal to 0. Got it?